what's up students it's your boy pgt here we're back again with another video today i'm going to be talking to you guys about contamination i'll be showing you some examples of some common contaminations you might come across so you know exactly what to look out for and i'll be going over some tips on how you can reduce your chances of contamination with your grows the first thing i want to touch base on is that contamination is always going to be a factor when it comes to growing mushrooms no matter how clean and sterile you are, there's always going to be a risk with contamination. Every mycologist has to deal with contamination at one point or another. You have to understand that contamination is part of the game. And the only control we have over this is to reduce the risk or the chance of it happening. Now I know a lot of beginners are getting into growing and they feel very defeated when contamination happens to them. Just don't give up and try again. Learn from what might have caused it and improve your sterile technique for next time. Now for me personally, I always have about a 10 to 15% contamination rate on my grows on average. I get them in my agar, I get them in my grain jars, even inside my tubs. The number one tip that I can give you guys in order to combat this is to increase your odds. If you have, let's say, 10 jars, uh, what are the chances of all 10 jars going bad? Uh, it's it's going to be very slim. You increase your odds at success doing this and that then, you know, if you have 10 jars going and a couple of them go bad, it's not so bad because you still have a few others that you can still use throughout the process. One of the most common contaminations you can get with your grain jars is known as Bacillus or wet rot. They sometimes survive the sterilization process as heat resistant endospores. They look very slimy, often brownish in color, and they produce a very foul, smelly, rotten odor. Oftentimes they show up when our grains are too wet. Is your rice too wet, you fucked up? Bacillus loves to thrive in moist environments, and this is why it's an important process to dry our grains prior to sterilizing them. The next common contamination I'm going to talk to you guys about is going to be cobweb mold. Uh, it gets its name from its spiderweb looking features. Many beginners have trouble telling apart cobweb mold from mycelium. Now the key difference with cobweb mold is that it's gray in color. The strands are very sporadic and chaotic looking compared to mycelium which usually spreads in a predictable fashion. One thing to note is that cobweb mold will take off much faster than mycelium and it can multiply twice in size within a matter of a day or sooner. Now cobweb mold is also very thick and it will likely grow up along the sides of your tub if you let it spread. A uh, quick test you can do to check if you have cobweb mold is to spray hydrogen peroxide onto it. If it is indeed cobweb mold, it will melt away. And hydrogen peroxide in small amounts is not harmful to mycelium at all. Uh, here's another picture of cobweb mold, just so you can use as a reference. All right, the next common contamination I want to talk to you guys about is known as trichoderma. It's also known as green mold. Trichoderma starts off bright white and will turn green once it starts to sporulate. Now be very careful when handling trichoderma. The spores are very powdery and dusty and you do not want to breathe this stuff in. I've dealt with it before in the past and it's made me sick for about two days after I accidentally uh, inhaled some of the spores here. Uh, so be very careful when handling it. If you do end up with trichoderma, I recommend not opening it up inside, but to bring it outside and dispose of it immediately as to not risk the chance of getting the spores everywhere as uh, it can wreak havoc to the rest of your grow area. Now here's a quick tip for anyone that's uh, curious about their contamination. Uh, it's called the Q-tip test. Uh, what you do is you take a cotton Q-tip and you swab at the material. Now if it's mycelium, uh, like in this case here, uh, it won't typically rub off onto the Q-tip. It'll be very clean and uh, in the case that it is contamination, uh, it will easily come off onto the Q-tip and uh, this is an example of how you can tell that you're dealing with contamination. Now some of you might be wondering, but Sensei, what if I catch it early? Can I cut it out and save my tub? The simple answer is yes, but I would be very careful about this. The risk may or may not be worth it depending on what you're trying to achieve. I'll show you guys an example of what happens when you try and fight the contamination. Here is a tub that has trichoderma in the corner. Now the grower cut out the contaminated part and then proceeded to salt the area surrounding it to help mitigate the spread. Now trichoderma once it turns green, it's very hard to stop. Even if you cut it out and remove it, you're not going to get rid of it completely. 
you can see that it slowly starts to come back. All you can really do is slow down the spread enough so that you can get a flush out of your tub before you ultimately have to get rid of it. I want to emphasize that if you're going to do this, that you isolate your tub to an area by itself as to not spread the spores around in your room. Uh, trichoderma is the number one contamination that will ruin your grow and it's not something to be playing around with. If it was me personally, I would not bother to try and save my tub. I would just get rid of it and not even take a chance on playing with it. But I really thought this was really cool and I wanted to share this with you guys in case you decide to uh, venture in at your own risk of doing this. All right, here are some tips on fighting contamination. 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Keep a stockpile of this around. This stuff works miracles for sanitizing anything. It does a better job at sanitizing than 90% isopropyl alcohol. And if you don't have access to this, you can also use a 10% bleach solution. It's also a good alternative for cleaning if you don't want to use up all your alcohol. I would avoid sprays like Lysol because although it can kill bacteria, Lysol is not something you want your mycelium exposed to. It can actually cause more issues than what you're trying to fix. So stick with the alcohol or bleach solution in my opinion. Uh, what I like to do with my alcohol is I'll put it in a little bit spray bottle. This makes it a lot easier to spray for cleaning uh, instead of having to pour it out every single time. Uh, get yourself a spray bottle, it will save yourself a lot of time in the long run. Now with the isopropyl, I'll use it to sanitize everything that I can before I do my work. I spray my gloves, I wipe down my work surface area, I'll spray my tubs and I'll wipe them down and let them dry prior to spawning inside of them. I wipe down all my tools as well as all the lids of my jars before handling. Don't be afraid to be as clean as possible. And another thing you want to avoid if you can help it is carpet. Carpet houses a lot of nasty bacteria and mold spores and it's best to keep your stuff elevated off the ground to avoid getting it near any contamination. If you end up having a vacuum or if you happen to be walking around, uh, chances are you're going to be kicking up a lot of those uh, mold spores and bacteria up in the air and that can uh, get inside of your tubs and uh, do some damage in there. So uh, definitely avoid it if you can. And my final tip that's helped me to reduce contamination is to get a room purifier with a HEPA filter in it. This will help knock out a lot of airborne bacteria and mold spores that may float around in your room and get into your stuff. I keep my air purifier running 24-7 in my room. Uh, even with all this going, I still deal with a little bit of contamination, but uh, I have reduced the chance down by a lot by taking all of these steps to ensure that my workspace is as clean as possible. I'll have a link in the description below with the same purifier that I use if you guys are interested. Uh, with that said, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like on the video and a comment to help my channel out. And if you're getting started and you need some help with mycology, feel free to join me over on my Discord server. Um, with that said, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.